The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. What you need to know first and foremost is that when God saved you, that did not make you perfect physically. When God saved you, that didn't mean you will never be tempted and you will just glide your way into heaven. That is not correct. God saved your soul and you are a new creature on the inside. Your desires have changed. Your perspective of the things that you want has changed. However, God did not save your flesh. This natural body, this carnal man, and the cold truth is, you will have to fight to deal with your flesh until you go to be with the Lord or until the Lord makes his wondrous return. This is why in the word of God, time and time again, we see verses such as these, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Nothing quite destroys the life of believers quite like lust. Very rarely do you find people talking about this subject because it is something that is a very real struggle in the lives of Christian men and women, and that is lust. This sermon is not to condemn you. It's not to shout at you and tell you that you are a sinner and that you will be cast into the lake of fire, because unfortunately, there are a tremendous amount of Christians that question whether they are saved or not because they are dealing with lust and temptation. Once you are saved, there are things you will have to begin to do, such as what we are told to do in Galatians chapter 5. We are to walk in the Spirit. And this means you have to live an intentional life. You cannot walk in the Spirit accidentally, particularly in this world. This world will do all it can to pump you with lust. Everywhere you turn, there is something attempting to push you towards lust. You can go to the airport on those electric billboards. You will see half-naked people advertising a shoe. Tell me, why does someone have to be half-naked to advertise a shoe? You can go on your social media accounts and you will see lustful videos or pictures pop up. Or you can be watching an action film and it will add a random scene showing lustful things for no reason. The truth is, we live in a world that encourages and promotes lust and promiscuous behavior. The truth is, our culture competes side by side with the filth and immorality of Sodom and Gomorrah. The truth is, our culture competes side by side with some of the pagan cultures that we see in the Bible. Look at what was acceptable in the pagan cultures. Having concubines was acceptable. All forms of sexual immorality were acceptable. And a lot like our culture, sexual relations with people before and outside of marriage with literally anyone was acceptable. What may surprise you is that in ancient pagan world, these practices were part and parcel of their religions. For instance, back in those pagan religions, there were temple prostitutes, which were part of their worship. It appealed to the flesh. You see, what the devil does is try to make some topics taboo. And the more he does this, the more he makes people feel like they are the only person who struggles with these things. But the truth is, you are not the only one who struggles with lust. Lust is a real problem. It is something that you don't just outgrow naturally. There are 15-year-olds that are struggling with lust, and there are even 70-year-olds who are struggling with lust. It is not something you can simply just ignore and think will go away. There is a history of great men in the Bible who have been through difficult situations because of lust. Samson and Delilah, David and Bathsheba, Solomon and 1,000 wives and concubines. Even today, I see young men's futures destroyed because of lust smart, intelligent men's futures destroyed because of lust. Imagine what you could become if you didn't spend those endless hours on end watching porn and rather invested those hours into reading God's word or starting your own business or focusing on your education. Imagine what you could become if you didn't spend those endless hours on end watching porn and rather invested those hours into something productive. How different would your life be? Imagine the man or woman you would be if you did not spend those hours watching these videos. What is pushing you to watch porn is lust. And you should treat lust like the enemy it is. This is one of the ways the devil destroys God's chosen people. I have seen promising people marry out of lust. Not taking account that person you marry is the second most important decision in your life. The first being believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have seen men and women who had the potential to change the world, but that potential was stifled because they married because of lust. Don't marry because of lust. Marry because of character. 
Looks fade. That man is not always going to be as aesthetically pleasing as he is now. And then you will be left with the person's character. Looks fade. That woman is not always going to be as aesthetically pleasing as she is now. And then you will be left with the person's character. Don't be just blinded by lust and allow lust to dictate your decisions. Lust is unique. Lust is something that has the ability to make a person change the very trajectory of their life. Lust can make someone make life-altering decisions for the sake of 20 minutes of pleasure or for a short span of gratification. Lust will mess up your future. Pastors are falling out of ministries because of lust. Joyous, wonderful marriages are being broken up because of lust. Nothing quite brings sorrow like lust. Have you ever seen a grown man weep and cry in sorrow because he destroyed his family because he had a problem with lust? The sorrow of a man who finally loses the wife he loves simply because he could not stop his adulterous behavior? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth destroyeth his own soul. Do you understand that adultery destroys your soul? And you may have a secret life that no one knows about, a secret sexual relationship, or multiple secret sexual relationships that your husband or wife does not know about, and it may appear to you that you have gotten away with it. You may not say this out loud, but someone is thinking in their hearts, I have been committing adultery for years now. I am still healthy. I have money in the bank. My family is good and all is well. Why would I stop now? I have to warn you, it may appear that all is well. However, the Bible says that act of adultery is destroying your very soul. We usually think that the penalty for sexual immorality comes if the sin is exposed and known. Wisdom and God's word tell us that it destroys whether it is exposed or not. Go home to your wife, go home to your husband, and stop committing that sin. Confess that sin to God and he will forgive you. Yes, he will forgive you. Adultery is not the unforgivable sin. There are three categories of lust that the Bible enumerates. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. If you cannot discipline your eyes, then you have a great problem with the lust of the eyes. As a man or woman, if you cannot discipline the way you look at the opposite sex, then you will be a victim of the lust of the eyes. Job made a covenant with his eyes never to look at the nakedness of a maiden. Job chapter 31 verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? We all know we can't go through life with our eyes closed. It's not practical. There is a difference between you just walking and someone catching your eyes. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to keep looking. Move on with your day. Why do you need to look for a second time or a third time or for a prolonged period of time? Why do you need to desire and let your mind long for stuff it shouldn't? Don't look. So that is the first practical step, is simply don't look. And I think we can all agree that there are different types of looking. When you are driving or walking or going about your business, you are looking. But there is a completely different type of looking when you are lusting over a person. That is what I'm saying. Don't do it. You know the type of looking that has you playing different scenarios in your mind. Let's say you are walking down the street and you see an attractive person of the opposite gender. Carry on with your business. You don't have to turn your head and start fantasizing. Just don't look. Every fornication started with someone looking. All adultery started with someone looking. It only takes you looking and lusting. That is a door the devil needs. That is the door the spirit of lust needs. That look. The Bible instructs us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Don't look. David could not look away when he saw Bathsheba bathing on the rooftop. That lust led him to commit adultery and murder, which brought a great consequence upon his life. It all started with him looking. This is my point about lust making people make stupid decisions. David stole another man's wife and then got that woman's husband killed because he got that man's wife pregnant. The reason why lust is so dangerous is because it makes people make decisions they regret. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 32. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth, it destroyeth his own soul. King David, who was a brilliant strategist on the battlefield and a man of courage, a wise ruler on the throne, but when lust consumed him, he lost his common sense when he gazed at his Bathsheba and lusted for her. The spirit of lust makes people make decisions they know are bad. I mean, come on, we all know, and I am sure David knew, that messing with another man's wife was never going to end well. Yet he still did it. Why? Because lust makes people make silly decisions. It makes people make dumb decisions. People fornicate because of lust. You know you shouldn't be giving yourself to different people. You are the temple of God. If you have a problem with porn, fornication, or adultery, fundamentally, 
And firstly, you have a problem with your eyes. Don't view things that will lead you down committing sinful acts. Everything that happened to David started because he was looking. Last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.